Hey guys, it's Big Nick here, and I am here to give you my Survivor Series predictions. I am doing this the Monday of, and that means Survivor Series is just this Sunday, so let's begin. Um, we know Survivor Series is once again supposed to be a six-hour slog, just like they're doing with all the big four pay-per-views. They're going to be more than four hours long, which means I can expect the two-hour kickoff show and then the four-hour pay-per-view. I mean... We can't complain, but we, it looks like it's going to be a trend they're going to do with the big pay-per-views. WrestleMania and SummerSlam, I'm fine with. Rumble, it doesn't need to be that long. And Survivor Series doesn't have the prestige anymore to be that long. Okay, we're just going to begin. As of right now, they do not have a pre-show match or kickoff match announced. Probably by the end of this week, they will have a couple because it's going to be a two-hour kickoff show. So I'm expecting at least two, to maybe three kickoff matches. Just to help the thing go, just to help the thing go along. So probably be both centered between SmackDown versus Raw, like a, like a random SmackDown tag team versus random SmackDown versus random Raw team, then mid Carters, and then probably well, I can't say women's, and then probably something else. So yeah, we're just gonna begin. First off, we're gonna start off with the Cruiserweight Championship match. Kalisto once again will challenge Enzo, and this match is gonna be. I have a feeling it's gonna be bad because the match at um the last pay per view TLC was not all that good. It's kind of boring. Enzo has proven he's not the he's not a great wrestler. He has great he's great on the mic, but his wrestling skills are far beyond that of most of the, of the entire cruiserweight division. Especially with the rumor of a Tommy coming up and possibly Rockstar Spud to the main roster, gonna make Enzo's cruiserweight title reign kind of falter. Next up, we have a match that has yet to be announced, but we expect it to be announced starting tonight, going into tomorrow, leading into the final series, and that's the Shield versus the New Day. Uh, because last week, the New Day cost the Shield their Raw Tag Team Championships. And we know tonight, Roman Reigns is scheduled to return. So that could possibly lead to the New Day. Ver and we know Am and Rollins and Ambrose said they will be at SmackDown tomorrow. So it pretty much kind of confirms Shield versus New Day for Survivor Series. Um, and in that match, oh yeah, the Cruiserweight title, I expect Enzo to retain. And that match, I expect the Shield to go, to go over. That's because it's the Shield, and they really haven't they haven't had their chance to compete together after getting at the Roman Reigns got sick at uh, before TLC. Next up, we have is the tag team champions versus tag team champions, the Raw tag team champions, the Bar Shame Zaro versus the Usos. Uh, this one I expect to be very good, just like if if it was the Shield versus the Usos, I still expect it to be very good. Shame Zaro has proven 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 that they are probably one of the two bet three best teams in WWE today. And they've constantly, constantly been giving great, great matches. So, hopefully that goes off well. Um, in this one, I see the Usos going over. Just due to the fact of how the Usos have been built on SmackDown. And due to the fact that kind of last year, the, Sm the Raw tag teams won. So, maybe this year, the SmackDown tag teams will win. I see the Usos going over. Because I know both teams are heels. So, there's going to be a lot of shenanigans going on. Will you sit up? Thank you. So yeah, I expect that to go on. I do expect the Usos to win. I'm kind of 50-50. I want both teams to win. I, I'm going with the Usos. Next up we have is the Women's Champion versus Women's Champion. That is Alexa Bliss versus Natalya. Now this match can change between the next 24 hours because next tomorrow night Charlotte is scheduled to face Natalya. And me and many people believe Charlotte's going to win. So I'm going to have predictions for both scenarios. First off, if it's Alexa versus Natalia, Alexa wins. Clean up. But if Charlotte does end up winning, which I had that strong feeling Charlotte's going to end up winning the, the SmackDown Women's title, they will only become the second women to have held both Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships, which kind of makes it a little bit more big build for that match because both women have done it, Alexa and Charlotte. If it's Alexa and Charlotte, I'm going to go with Charlotte winning that one. Just because you've seen... Just because, the reason why Alexa would beat Natalia is due to the fact that Alexa is better than Natalia, in my opinion. And the reason that Charlotte will go over WWE, clearly, they like both of the women, but I think Charlotte's higher on their pedestal than Alexa. So that's how I see it. If it's Natalia versus Alexa, Alexa wins. If it's Charlotte versus Alexa, Charlotte wins. And I think the Charlotte versus Alexa is the smarter match due to the fact of more name value and it's could be a pretty much better match. I mean, Alexa and Natalya can have a pretty solid match. It's just that I believe Charlotte and Alexa can have a better one. Next up we have is the mid-card belts. And that is 
Miz in the Intercontinental Championship versus Baron Corbin in the U.S. title. Now, this one I'm stuck on due to the fact of you don't want either of those two to lose. Miz has probably been the better, the best book champion over the past year. Um, and Baron Corbin just won the U.S. title a month or so ago. I believe, yeah, I believe it was just over a month ago. So, I have a... I'm going to go on the loop here and say this match is not going to have an official ending. Because Corbin, you're not going to have him lose to The Miz by cheating of Axel and Dallas. Because Corbin can go out there and fucking destroy them. Literally, and I mean destroy them. He'll literally beat the hell out of them. And then he has Miz also to himself. We've seen what big man, what a big man can do to The, the Miz, Taraz, and Strowman. I'm not saying Corbin is Strowman, but he's pretty dangerous. I mean, he can't beat Zinkata, but that's beside the point. But yeah, I see I see it ending in like a double countout or DQ on behalf of the Mysteraj or on, on the ha on behalf of the Mysteraj. Just so that both champions get away scot free. Then now we're going into the two traditional Survivor Series matches, then the main event, which I believe should be the main event, which probably won't, but could be. First off is the Raw Women's match and that is Alicia Fox, the team captain, Nia Jax, Asuka, Sasha, and the current and the final uh teammate which will be announced tonight, which I believe Spoiler alert is the return in Paige. Paige is supposed to return tonight, be involved in that triple threat, and possibly win it. I mean, it would be very, very smart for them to do that because you're adding a surprise to the team. Because if you, because I believe the match was built around the triple threat is Mickey, Dana, and Bailey. The SmackDown women's team can prepare for that. And you go, from, you go with Paige, who hasn't competed in pretty much a year, in over a year, damn near, or it has, or has it been a year? I think almost. I think it's pretty. I think it's damn near. I think it's been almost a year since Paige has last been seen on WWE. Yeah, it has. She's been gone since last year. So yeah, put Paige on the team. One you had, and it's a pretty good team. Even if it was Bailey, I mean, if you kick Alicia Fox out, but you do have Alicia Fox, who's a veteran. Nia Jax, Sasha, Oscar, and I expect Nia, and I expect them to kind of book the Raw. And I expect the Raw women's team to win because they have Nia Jax and Oscar on the team. And the SmackDown women's team would be Team Captain Becky Lynch, Tamina, Charlotte, Carmella, and Naomi. But it, Charlotte could not be on the team, so whatever happens tomorrow, it could be Natalia. Either way, even if Natalia is thrown in that slot, I say the Raw women's team will win. And I say they're going to win hefty. By hefty, I mean there's going to be at least three survivors on the Raw team. Whether it's going to be... And the three survivors I pick will be either... Will be Asuka, Paige, and Sasha. Alicia's going to get... Alicia's gonna take the initial fall for Raw, and Nia's gonna get beaten by like a count out or something. As then that's when Oscar really comes in and just dominates. And uh, then I say Paige gets like the final fall because and, like Paige gets the final fall over a uh, Natalia or Carmel or over a Natalia type or even Becky. <laughs> so yeah, Raw women's the Raw women's team will win with three survivors: Paige, Sasha, Oscar. Now we're going to go to the men's match. And the women's one I think would be pretty decent. Last year's was oh, was pretty okay. The tag team was pretty okay. It's just that I think the, they could have did the the women's match a bit better because how they quickly they eliminate Sasha kind of left a sour taste in my mouth last year. And next up is the raw is the men's match. So and it's the Raw team team captain Kurt Angle, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, and who's the other one? And his and Kurt Angle's black son Jason Jordan. Versus Team SmackDown, Shane O'Mac, Team Captain, Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, the glorious one, Shinsuke Nakamura, and announced last week, John Cena. Now this one, last year's was great. It went on a bit long. I did say it was almost an hour match, but it was great anyway. This one I expect to be the same, because you do have some of the same names involved. You have Strowman and Orton involved, who were on the te last year's teams. Everyone else was not there. Literally, Angle wasn't here, and Shane O'Mac was there. Angle, Balor was out, Joe hadn't been called up yet, Jordan was on SmackDown Tag Teams, Shane O'Mac was involved in Orton, Bobby Roode and Nakamura were in NXT, and Cena had not. Cena had already been gone. So, in this one, I have a couple of things going on. One, I would... Actually, three choices. One, the Raw team wins with Braun Strowman doing the handiwork, with Braun Strowman being the sole survivor. Two... Raw, uh, SmackDown wins with 
John Cena and Randy Orton being the salt with being the two survivors because that's how they book them. And three raw wins off of shenanigans caused by Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and a possibly Daniel Bryan. Now this is someone I've seen. Now this is something I've seen swan around online on Twitter. I'm going with the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn part because I had kind of been predicting that for a while, especially all the thing, shenanigans that have been going on, and then. Kevin Owens recently on Twitter, he and Randy Orton taking shots at each other. I don't know if it's fake. I don't know if it's kayfabe or real. Like maybe setting up the potential tease for Survivor Series that they're gonna cost the team because Sami, Z- Sami Zayn's been quiet since the whole being sent home thing. But Kevin Owens has recently started to be active again, pretty much going at Orton, which kind of all, but kind of in a way makes us all seem kayfabe because I doubt Kevin Owens is intentionally trying to get fired. He's been he's been one of the most successful guys on the roster and one of the in a way better booked some NXT. So I doubt he's trying to get intentionally fired. I think he's just doing all this to piss off Team SmackDown. Well, he gets involved. He and Sami Zayn get involved, costing like the last SmackDown person being probably Cena against uh, either Joe or Strowman, maybe even Angle. Where he where they cost them, but they don't. And it doesn't lead to them leaving SmackDown. It just leads to them really pissing off Shane. Just to get back in, the reason why I say Daniel Bryan is due to the fact of why Daniel Bryan could get involved, as I've seen things going online about this, is due to the fact of Shane is being allowed to wrestle and Daniel Bryan isn't, and due to the fact of they're the men of honor. So yeah, hopefully, we'll know everything that goes down tomorrow with Zayn and Owens, if they're going to be even involved in WWE, because last week they were scheduled, they were announced to have a match this week against the New Day. So if they're on SmackDown this week... Probably means things are okay between them and WWE, and we'll see what goes down in Survivor Series. But yeah, thank you. And also, we have the final match, and that is the main event that I think it should be, and that is champion versus champion, Brock Lesnar, the Universal Champion, versus, I can finally say it again for the first time since January, the WWE Champion, the Phenomenal AJ! Styles! He beat that piece of crap Mahal last week who was probably going to get involved in this match. One of my few choices of a match ending. But yes, AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. WWE Champion versus Universal Champion. Okay, they're just going to start off into the... One, I... Ah, it's just hard to pick how these matches are going to be with Lesnar because we all expected Strowman and Joe to have great matches with him and they all ended up... I mean, Joe versus Lesnar was fun, but it was only eight minutes. Strowman and Lesnar was okay, but it only lasted about five minutes. So here it goes. Main, here it goes. Three choices. One, Lesnar wins in like five minutes. Two, Lesnar wins anyway. And three, Mahal screws over AJ. Which I have a feeling they're going to do the Mahal part screwing over AJ because you don't want to make the WWE Championship seem so much weaker to the new Universal Championship. They've never done that. Even back in the um, the original brand split, the WWE title was always put on a higher pedestal than the World Heavyweight Championship. They main event more pay-per-views. And yeah, that's just how they feel because it's their title and the univer- it's their original title. So I see Lesnar winning either way. I love AJ. He's my favorite wrestler today, but he's not going to beat Brock. Especially since they, especially if they want Brock Lesnar to be the most unbeatable thing going into his match with Reigns at Mania. So yep, that is it. I hear my predictions again. Enzo Amore retains the Shield over the New Day, which should be announced soon. The Usos over Shane Zaro, the Bar. Alexa, if it's Alexa v Natalya, Char- and if it's Alexa v Charlotte, Charlotte. Uh, Baron Corbin and the Miz. I don't have a. I see it being a DQ fashion or a double countout. Raw Women's. The Raw Women's team wins. The the uh, men's team, I see it either being Raw wins with Strowman being dominant, SmackDown wins with Orton and Cena just doing what they do, or Raw wins through the shenanigans caused by Zayn and Owens and maybe Daniel Bryan gets involved, like he gave him the okay to do it. And main event, Lesnar just wins. So, yep. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys again this week. Uh, well, not this weekend. In a week from today for my Survivor Series review. So... Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and surprise. Surprise. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys again. Bye.